Good evening. I'm Ron McCann. I am an ag teacher at the Bow Memorial FFA uh, High School or Bow Memorial FFA and ag teacher for the high school. And I'll be discussing my signature assessment project for my students. My table of contents, of course, first uh, slide and probably the longest we'll be staying with is the meeting agenda and then uh, progressing on to the vision statement, project part one and two, data analysis, our reflection of the next steps and conclusion. So the agenda we have today is, uh, we'll start out with the sign and rolls, me being the presenter, uh, my welding teacher and a fellow instructor, uh, Mr. Sterling, being the timekeeper, and the, uh, <laughs> sorry, elect electrical and industrial. industrial maintenance teacher, Mr. Kurtzinger, he'll be the facilitator. So our presentation on the PLC plan, me being the FFA advisor I am, a lot of our competitions deal with students being in front of older adults, fellow peers, or even young people in general that they'll be teaching things to or competing in front of. And that being a main focus, I get to see a lot of students who struggle with certain speaking habits or being able to speak at all in a confident manner. Now, that has become a greater problem with the young people of today because if they're not looking down at a phone or talking to someone on a phone or using their fingers, they do not know how to properly speak to someone. And that is probably the biggest uh, focus I want to stay on with my PLC meeting is how do we get our students focusing and going back to the presentation that used to be. Now, I'll drop on to my vision statement for a second. Of course, my vision statement uh, as a teacher is to impact not only my students, but all of our CTC students who may have a uh, educational journey that may cause them to struggle at one time speaking in front of somebody. Uh, I strive to allow my students to feel confidently in my class and to keep a positive outlook throughout all of our assignments. But yet, majority of the time when we get down to public speaking, we see our students drop. We see our students' heads sink and their confidence levels fall apart. Not only when it comes to just presenting up on a board in front of their kids, whether it be a PowerPoint or a presentation over a subject, but even talking to us in general, straight on. A lot of our students don't even have the confidence to look a elder in the eye anymore. And that seems to be a struggle that, like I said before, is growing greatly. And it's hard for me to uh, show the true life goal of this because these students don't see a problem with it because no one tells them anymore. You, my fellow instructors who are in here right now, your generation was shake your hands, look eye to eye, and everything was done with face to face. Now the industry that we teach in, a lot of things are over the phone, over a computer, or during this COVID pandemic, over Zoom. So a student loses the ability to talk face-to-face. -face. Going back to the agenda, the four, uh, four essential questions that I must know and use consistently to make sure that my, my vision becomes a outcome that is a positive manner for our school system. One is, what do we want our students to learn? I want my students to be able to have the confidence with not only their peers, but with our elders, our teachers, our soon-to-be fellow leaders in the community, and talk to them confidently. Talk to them in an appropriate, respectful manner. Forget the competitions, forget speaking in a crowd, presenting like I am today. I want them just to be able to speak to someone face-to-face -face and not have to look away because they feel too awkward. Next question is, how will we know when our students have learned what we want them to learn? If we don't set goals for our students, if we don't set goals for ourselves, we won't know if our students have accomplished what we want. 
So what would be a couple of questions? I'd like for my fellow instructors to think, what would be some questions that we can answer that will tell us if our kids have answered it? Mine would be eye contact. Mine would be their voices. Different questions, what do they sound like? What do they look like as they're presenting? Is their body hunched? Are they trying to avoid you at all costs? But I want y'all to think of something that you would have that would, you'd know if your kid is being confidently speaking back to you or not in your classroom. How will we respond when a student, when students do not learn? I think today's manner is we allow students to get away with failure. Out of all honesty, I believe that we have allowed our students to fail. And it, oh, it's okay, Johnny. We'll get, get it next time, and we never go back to that problem. We just mark it up to a incomplete. We don't grade them, we just give them an incomplete because we have no child left behind. We have things that allow us to move those students on even if they're not passing our assessment. Then, how will we enrich those students who have already learned what we need them to learn? We all have students. We share students in all of our classes. We have our A plus students that in one day get what we teach. But yet, then we have our D minus that will take a whole week or even two weeks to learn what we want to teach. How do we keep our A plus students rolling along with our D minus not falling further behind? How do we keep them staying together, but yet, hey, my A plus students are not falling down to the D minus timeline, but yet it's still rolling forward and gaining more confidence and ability to speak in front of people. Now, our presentation of the PLC project. And this is where I'll start rolling off of our agenda now. So the problem, as I already said, was, oh, see if I can zoom in on that, no. Our presentation, first off, is the problem. I have a student. He has started out having a struggling problem. And his biggest problem was he couldn't even speak to me in front of the class. He was quiet, he was soft-spoken, he didn't even hardly look up at me. He almost talked, and his mask had made it even worse because now he can mumble, and that would be his easy excuse to stay out of having to speak loudly in front of the class. That student is very near and dear to me because I know him, I've seen him grow up, so I really want to focus on him because if I can pull this off of him, I feel like I have a chance with so many other students who are not far past in this problem. All right, so the PLC project part one. Of course, I've already talked to you about the problem. I have a student which is a particularly scared and shy person who has been made even worse because of the mask because it is a crutch that they can even use as more of an excuse to not speak or to mumble or whisper instead of speaking out in front of the class or to myself. And they struggle to speak out in groups in the greenhouse or with small projects. And it's hard to give them a grade in the class of being a leader, even being a proper member if they don't ever give any input or action. Even small groups, they don't want to speak up because they're afraid of what someone might say or judge them by for speaking. So my strategy, the student will improve his public speaking skills by following steps uh, I implement for him over the next few weeks. So we're going to kind of break it down over a couple weeks. I have five weeks left, and I'm hoping by the time our uh, creed speaking and other competitions occur that we can allow so the plan was a couple weeks before spring, spring break to have the student following a certain amount of steps for them that I have set aside. Now going ahead, it is now action. Instead of plan, it is now an action. And it was to help him understand that most of what he is feeling is only going in with himself. People are not thinking that he is not sounding proper, that his ideas are not stupid, that his nerves are only getting to him, that no one else noticed him. He's the one that's causing the main issue. 
And uh, if I will help him learn how to be more prepared when he speaks, and a lot of us have that problem that we have to think before we speak, and that helps a lot of things that come out of our mouths and that sound is dumb, that it should allow the young man to, I guess, improve his feelings of being more prepared, where he's not speaking just off the top of his head. And a lot of times, he has to learn that it is practice, practice, practice. Now, that is fine with competition speaking because we had that time to practice over one specific speech. Now, just speaking in front of the classroom, that will change up some of our action plans that we will set in place for him. Now, I will work with him in all three of these areas for a few weeks, or I did work with him in all, all these areas, and hopefully this will work not just for him, but any future students that have the same problem that he does. And like we always do, the hypothesis that it will work and we will see soon. And if it does, I'll keep this plan in place for any future students that we may have that problem with. Now, bear with me with this slide. This PLC project, part two, goals of intervention. My first goal is to help understand that most of what he is feeling is only going on within himself. We wanted him to know that the student that passed told me uh, that she ought, there was a student that told me once that I had in competition speaking and always told me that she always thought that she could feel people just thinking what she was saying was wrong or she didn't like what uh, they thought of it. And it all automatically made her think that any words coming out of her mouth was bad or not important enough, so she just didn't want to say it. And it made her lose focus on what she was saying. Not many of us can do multiple things. So with her mind going in one direction, scared of what they're thinking, she lost her train of thought when she was speaking in these competitions. And honestly, when I was sitting there and she thought that, I looked at her and I said, I can't even tell you're nervous. So I've tried to implement this with the student so far and told him this whole scenario that my former speaker had and have tried to put it into place that, hey, no one can tell you're nervous until you start showing it more by just wanting to quit talking yourself. I think if he can understand that it's not an obvious action, that no one can tell his nervousness, that no one can see the sweat coming off his brow, that he'll be able to handle it, that it will reverse in his mind and he can start speaking in a greater tone with more confidence, knowing that no one else can tell what he is or isn't saying. My second goal, is to help him learn how to make his speeches interactive. Now, this student, being shy already, struggled with interacting with students that was not already in his group of friends. And this student has so many friends, more than what he ever thought, that is not shy at all. In fact, I usually have to get after them for talking too much during class. And he has very little to say while they're saying way too much, which never, I guess, struck me as a normal thing because you'd think a kid who was shy, such as my young student, would not want to be around kids who constantly talk. But yet I've turned that around and I've said, hey, you see your friends? They never get slowed down talking. They never feel like they're uncomfortable. They always seem to get the rest of the class involved in your speaking or in my speaking or with whatever they're speaking over. Well, what, why is that? And this student kind of started telling me, hey, they're, they're, they're fun. They, they tell jokes. They make somebody feel comfortable around them. So I said, why are you not doing this? And that allowed that student to understand, you know, sometimes <coughs> to make them more comfortable to speak to them, he's got to give them something to make it more interactive. He's got to make them feel like that conversation is enjoyable to be a part of. Now, my third goal is to help them learn how to be prepared. And like we all know, to do any job, you must work at it. We have to practice, practice, practice. One reason this student has not been doing well on his speeches is because he's just coming up with things and trying to do it right then instead of practicing. Now, of course, you think, why am I putting a student who has problems speaking out in a competition about speaking? Well, no one's ever good at something until they first try it. 
So why not throw a student into something where he has a chance to succeed where he's never tried before? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I put the student in a competition that's called Prepared Public Speaking, <coughs> where he has several hours to prepare a speech, go over it, practice it, and then say it to a group of people. Now, at first, the student wasn't putting as much time into his research, and he wasn't putting as much time into going over the speech. He could write it, look at it, and not really say it in his head and seeing how it sounded. So after a while with this third goal, I've had him go many times over and over again on one subject, researching it over and over again, and then saying it out loud to me and only me several times and asking him, where does it sound good? Where does it sound bad? Where are you getting caught up? What's messing you up? Now, over the past few weeks, I've worked with him in all three of these areas. And we focused on step at a time. And of course, we didn't always see the gain we wanted, but we did see some gain at some point. Now, his speech improvement has <coughs> greatly risen. And if you look at the data analysis, of course, after several speeches, <coughs> we have seen a fantastic gain. And one of the greatest gains of all was the knowledge. And of course, I told you I kept them on one subject most of the time. So of course, if you study for four weeks over one subject, you are going to show a gain in that content knowledge. And that is where we saw the greatest gain. Now we also saw confidence levels rise because the more you know something, the more you want to talk about it and the more you can. Us as teachers, we all went into a subject we were most comfortable with discussing and talking about, and that's what makes us well at our jobs because we've enjoyed it. We've become so full of not filled with knowledge that we have that we became confident we speak about it. We don't think there's anybody that knows more than us. And then finally, the, his voice. And his voice and eye contact, instead of this shy young man who wanted to read on his paper all the time, he started looking up at me. And then you go into the next speech, and he's not just looking up at me, he's also not even using his paper hardly. He's moving his hands. His voice starts to get stronger. And finally, the day before our speaking contest that we had for him, he didn't need the paper. He was so confident that he started making jokes. He started smiling while giving a speech. It wasn't work to him no more. He started to enjoy it. Now, is he the greatest speaker? No, he's still not there. But after just a couple of weeks and a couple of speeches, this, this young man has gone past where I thought he'd be just from a little bit of confidence given and a little more practice. So we lead to, we're going to be led to our reflection. From the data I showed, it seems as though the intervention has been effective. The young man can speak in front of people. He even tries to pull down his mask more sometimes so he can be heard even greater. He doesn't feel like he's losing confidence. He doesn't feel like his voice is unheard because anytime we want to speak and we want to be heard, our voice is going to get louder. He's using his louder voice now. And I believe he is on his the right track to probably winning some competitions pretty soon. Just being a freshman, uh, I think he has all the time in the world to keep on rolling. And finally, my next step is to continue monitoring him, but now it's time to start stepping in and trying to initiate this same procedure with some other freshmen or sophomores who might have a chance at becoming great speakers and working on speeches for me. So conclusion was a success. The goal of this project is a success, and I hope that y'all take into some of these goals and you get to use them with your own students. Uh, I have seen a huge improvement, and what was even funnier is as he improved, you saw some of his friends who, or not friends, but peers in the class with him start wanting to speak a little more too, just by seeing how much he's improved. Uh, this has been a learning experience for me as well, because I never had problems speaking to people. I was quite vocal myself. Uh, so getting to get into the head of a young man who did not have the confidence that I started with really made me appreciate things, but also made, made me open my eyes that not everybody's home life nor friendships went the same way mine did when it came to my confidence and speaking levels. Now, if we go back to the agenda, I was wanting my uh, peers to come up with some questions or some thoughts that they might would improve on here or about this young man. And do y'all have any questions? Nope. Uh, 
I don't have a question, but one of the things that I do in my class is if I have someone who lacks the confidence to speak up, if they ask a question, then I, I ask them to stand up. For, for one thing, if you stand up and it puts your voice above everyone else, but it, even if they're sitting in the back of class, that still puts them at the center of attention when they're standing. So that kind of helps them get over their fear of being up in front of class. And I've seen kids make leaps and bounds, but I, I love it that you, you had him on the same subject for a period of time. Then that, it, when, he, when his knowledge grows, his confidence is gonna automatically grow, but then his eye contact is gonna grow as well, just like her analysis showed. So one of the things that I wanna ask you about was uh, when you use, came through these steps to help this student gain confidence and be able to speak publicly, you kind of went through a, a regimented process to do that. Correct. And you've used this with other students. Are you able to use that regimented process or do you have to tweak off of it a little bit for each student? So me being ag, I've worked with many animals and I, I'll tell you one of the greatest ones I've worked with is horses. No step works the same with every horse, same with students. Sometimes you have to go at a slower pace. Sometimes you've got to desensitize at a different level or you're gonna blow their minds. If you make them, I, I do know that the young lady I first talked about, she was bold, but she wasn't so bold that she didn't get nervous. But when it came to just talking out loud, she was one of those jittery girls that would just yell out something and not think twice most of the time. So she didn't take as long to get confident about speaking on a subject like this young man. Uh, if I would have pushed him very hard, like I could have pushed the other young lady that I first talked about, he might have curled up and said, I'll never work for you again, or I might never speak for you again. So yes, there is tweaking. And sometimes you don't stay with one subject for a student. I've learned that some students get bored, so they lose interest. So you have to change up different subjects and they have to keep on learning one way or another in different subjects to stay, keep their attention. Well, one of the ways that I do to bring a student into the conversation that refuses to speak is I actually come up and camp out at his desk. I'll sit on his desk and say, now I'm gonna sit here until you can give me an answer. And I may not get that answer, but the next time I ask a question, I'll ask him first Pardon again. So I always try to bring that student into every conversation and force that answer out of them. Finally, they get to where they'll speak freely. One way or another, I've, I've learned that a student wants to give an answer. It's just not always sometimes the most confident way of doing it. So, well, gentlemen, I sure appreciate your time uh, sitting here with me and giving feedback. And I hope that we are going to keep improving with this student and many other students in these speaking competitions.